In this short video, I'm going to look at um, some things concerning um, William Tyndale. And uh, Tyndale was, uh, he was born in the late 15th century England, about 90 years after the church had banned the only complete English Bible in the world, the translation made by John Wycliffe. Now a lot of times when we pick up our King James Bible, we don't think about what people went through to put the precious Word of God in our hands. And the people who came before um, the King James translators had already done extensive work translating the Word of God. And it was the desire of the King James translators to make a good translation better but William Tyndale, I learned, he had uh, finally been captured by bounty hunters. And um, he had fled to Germany to begin his translation work. After completing a translation of the New Testament in 1525, he moved on to Antwerp, Belgium, staying one step ahead of the English king's bounty hunters. But it was a friend who had eventually betrayed Tyndale to the authorities. In May of 1535, he was arrested and held for 18 months before being tried for, quote, maintaining that faith alone justifies. That to believe in the forgiveness of sins and to embrace the mercy offered in the gospel was enough for salvation. Folks, how many times today do we deal with those who say that faith alone in Christ alone is not enough? And I dare say that's probably the real reason why Tyndale was put to death. He was put to death for the true gospel because he dared to say that faith alone in Christ alone is enough. Um, he maintained that faith alone justifies. And so often today we hear, um, no, you have to turn from your sins. You have to repent of all your sins. It's repentance of sins um, that God sees your heart, that you're truly sincere and you're truly sorry and you've beat yourself up enough and so God's going to let you into his kingdom. When really it is simply trusting in the gospel of Jesus Christ and what he did for you on the cross. Believing that his work was complete, that his work can now be transferred to you and you can be clothed with the righteousness of Christ because you believed on him and his uh, faith in his death and burial and resurrection. So um, two months after being condemned as a heretic, William Tyndale was led from his prison cell to the stake. As brush and logs were piled up around his feet, he was heard praying, Lord, open the King of England's eyes. The executioner then gave the rope a quick tug, strangling Tyndale before his body was consumed by the blaze. So, William Tyndale was one of those that let his light shine before men, just as Jesus said to do. And at great risk to himself and ultimately, causing his own death, he stood up for um, translating the Word of God so that common people could, could read it and believe it and understand it, and standing for the gospel that um, faith alone justifies the sinner, apart from any works that we could do to earn our way to heaven. But God answered Tyndale's prayer Two years after his death, King Henry VIII authorized the distribution of the Matthew Bible, largely composed of Tyndale's work. Then in 1539, the king ordered all printers and sellers of books to provide for the free and liberal use of the Bible in our own maternal English tongue. Tyndale's vision had become a reality. But it was from Wycliffe and Tyndale, um, and the original Greek and Hebrew tongues that we now have our King James Bible. 
a lot of the work was done by these men before them. And they acknowledge as much. But I believe the real reason that he was put to death was more than just translating the Word of God into English. Um, he was a threat to the society of the day, the religious leaders of that time, by daring to say that faith alone justifies the sinner. So, uh, this is going to do it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them. And until next time, God bless you and take care.